Hey, how's it going? And today we're just taking a quick look at the set timer by event, what it is and when we might want to use it. You can think of the set timer by event as a traffic cop that's letting some lanes of traffic through and blocking other lanes. And you can compare it to a delay node, which is like a construction project that's blocking all four lanes of traffic. A delay node is less flexible, it's more rigid, it's more global. The set timer by event is more selective, flexible, and can be canceled. And so I've just got a simple example of this to show you. If I hit play in the upper left corner, you'll see it says timer is active. And then in about 10 seconds, it's going to say the timer is working. The timer is working. You see that message up there. Now if I hit stop and I hit play again, you'll see the timer is working. But now if I press 1, you can see I can cancel it, unlike a delay note. So I'll just show you how I did this. It's really simple. And it's really handy. It's a, a different way of handling problems you might be having in your code more selectively. So to do this, I'm just going to right click and create a new blueprint class. We'll call this blueprint number two. We'll just come up here to the screen. Down here, I want to set the auto receive input to player zero so we can test it. And we're going to drive this off of an event begin play. And the first thing we're going to do is search for our timer so set timer by event right here there's also one for a function name but if you understand this one you pretty much understand the other one and so what happens is like I said this doesn't obstruct the program flow so when the game starts the flow is going to keep going but this event whatever event we create is the one that will be timed or delayed so if we put zero there's no delay at all so if I put 10 in here, there's going to be a 10 second delay, approximately a 10 second delay. Now to do this, because I've done this before, there's just a couple things I know we need to create, and I'm just going to create them all at once to save time. So I know I would need a print string. So I'm going to go print string here, and I'm just going to hit Control D, Control D, and Control D. And this one is going to say, timer is active. This one is going to say timer is not active. This one will say timer it, whoops, timer is working. And this last one is going to say timer is canceled. Okay, and then that's all we need. What's going to happen here is that the game's going to start, the program flow is going to continue, but there's going to be delay on whatever we want to delay. So let's say I want to print this string out here. So to do that, it needs an event. So I'm just going to right click and go add custom event right here. And this just plugs in here. And this will plug in here. So now the only thing that's going to be delayed in this blueprint is this event that we've selected out and otherwise the program flow will continue. Now to show you the other functions that this has, looping just keeps means it'll keep looping. The timer will keep looping. Here if I right click I can promote this to a variable and I can just leave it called new variable but this creates a reference to this timer and now I'm going to create a branch node. Hold down B and left click. And we can see some additional functionality that this timer has. So if I drag off of here and I search for timer, you'll see all the options that we have. And one of the options is, is the timer active by handle? And handle, another way to think of that is kind of as an event binding, that we're binding things together. So the handle is the bind. So if the handle is active, we're going to go in here. Our program is going to continue to flow into the branch. And if this timer is active, we're going to get a message saying, yes, this timer is active. If it's not active, we'll get a message saying that it's not active. 
but we're not going to get that message because the timer is active. And then when an event begins play, there's going to be a 10 second delay, and then this event will be called. Now, one of the beautiful things about this set timer by event is unlike a delay node, it can be canceled. Up here, I've created this object reference variable to this timer, so it's down here. And let's just make a custom keyboard press. I'll just go keyboard press. And we'll just make it number one. And then if I right click and drag, I can search for something called clear and invalidate timer by handle. And the handle here is the reference, right? So I plug this into there. So what this means is that I can cancel this timer now. So the idea is that, let's say, if this were a delay node, the whole program flow is going to be held up until the time has gone by. But with the timer, the program flow continues, and only this one event is delayed. So that's why I say it's like the traffic cop letting certain lanes through and other lanes not. A delay node will just shut the whole thing down. A delay node is also, there's no way to cancel it like you can with a set timer, with a timer. So here, if I decide, hey, I don't want the delay anymore, if I press 1, I can cancel this whole thing. So that's the, if I hit looping, I can cancel it the first time through, but then it's going to keep triggering and I have to keep pressing 1 to keep canceling it. So that's why I'm not selecting looping. And that's all we have to do. So I'm just going to compile and save this. And then I'll drag it into this scene. And I'll hit play. And we get timers active. And I'll just let it go. And then it's going to print that string. Saying the timer is working. The timer's working. Now if I hit play again. And this time I hit one. I've canceled the timer and we won't get another message. So anyway, it's just a way to think about giving you more alternatives in managing your flow of your game logic and things like that. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.